All right, so um, we had to cancel our grafting school this year because of the coronavirus. So we're home self-distancing, um, and I'm grafting trees for our people that registered. Uh, but wanted, since they can't learn through the class this year, they're just going to go home with trees. I wanted to kind of show them the basic uh, grafts that we would use for a situation like this. But first off, I would do a commercial on if you're interested in kind of going down the rabbit hole of becoming a collector of the various varieties. There's some great literature out there. Uh, Apples of New York is about a hundred year old book uh, with a lot of more, more northern uh, apples. Uh, but it's a two volume set. If you happen to find it on uh, like an antique store or something, pick it up for sure. Um, it's a very nice set of books. Uh, here in the south, of course, we have uh, a nice book that was put together by Lee Calhoun, Old Southern Apples, um, most of which are extinct, so he goes through the first um, 200 or so pages just with descriptions of the ones that are still around, and then the back, the majority of the book is the ones that are extinct. So, um, nice book, good history on a lot of these varieties, um, and I treated myself for Christmas this year, um, a new series of uh, an encyclopedia actually, uh, illustrated history of apples in the US and Canada. So every apple that's ever been described, this is a seven volume set, um, and it just reads like an encyclopedia. It starts in A's and goes all the way to Z's. This one is nice in that he has the USDA watercolor prints after each of the alphabetical letters. Um, so very nice set, and it's become very affordable um, considering uh, the quality of the work there. So uh, that's my commercial side note. Um, all right, so basic grafting is um, essentially matching the cambium layers of the wood. So um, this is our rootstock here. And if you get a bundle of rootstock, some of it's thicker, some of it's thinner. Uh, and it's going to be the same way with your cyan wood. So there's going to be a, probably a different graft depending on what you have. Um, I like the whip and tongue or the bench graft, assuming that both of my pieces are about the same caliper. Same caliper or about the same caliper. Where I'm making that cut is generally where the roots start, which is right here. I'm gonna place my hand right about there, and that's where I'm gonna make my cut so I have a little bit of that rootstock shank above the ground. And I can plant it a little bit deeper, I just don't want where that uh, graft union is to be in contact with mulch or soil because we don't want that to root. This rootstock has characteristics like disease resistance and size control that our scion variety may not have. So we want the qualities of the root and we will lose those qualities if this is scion variety is allowed to root. So this is a Grimes Golden that we're going to do here and this is a Geneva 969. So a nice freestanding medium sized tree um, that you know should make a, a more manageable um, size tree for a hobbyist. So I'm gonna find a scion that matches about six, seven inches up, and it looks like I'm about the same diameter there. So uh, get a good sharp uh, grafting knife or a utility knife can work. Um, so make a nice angled cut. That's not enough of an angle. Ideally, you've done this in one fell swoop. So if we can see here that outer ring where it's green, that's the cambium. So the, the more cambial contact we can create, the better off we're gonna be. And then I'll make that same angled cut on my scion. I'm just kind of trimming off that flap. And how I know I've got good angles is I just kind of put them side by side. If they're about the same, then I know, okay, I've, I can fit those two together. <clears throat> to make my, my tongue, I back cut in, and there's the center of the pith there. So I just go a little bit above that pith line. And this is where a lot of people will cut themselves. We don't have to do this fast. This doesn't take a lot of pressure. We can just sort of rock the knife back and forth. Just let the knife do the work. Where we get in a hurry is where we start getting cuts. So see there, about the width of the knife is really all I want, right there. Same here, 
making that same right above the pith. And I'm just rocking the knife in. About the width of the knife. All right, and I like to leave just two buds if I can. So see there, there's my bud here, bud here. More than that, you know, we may take too much energy to break bud and that energy is then not gonna go into the healing of this, uh, this union. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this because it's a little bit easier if I cut it down. All right, and then I just sort of slide those two flaps in there, maximizing the amount of cambial contact. And how we know we've got a good seal and why this is such a good graft you see there, I haven't even taped it and it's holding together. Then I've got my parafilm pre-cut here. I'm gonna wrap this in parafilm. This is an airtight um, sealant. It stretches. So you can see there I'm pulling and I'm stretching. Oops, and that happens. Pulling and I'm stretching. So this is gonna be watertight, airtight, but yet breathable. Um, this stuff wears out, um, so by midsummer, you know, this is going to start to seal and start to heal itself within the first couple months. Um, and by that time, this pear film um, will likely have just pushed right off with uh, the expanding growth. So right there, we're good. Now that's a cut end. We don't want that to dry out. So uh, something that works really great is just uh, a little dab of nail polish right there on the top. Pop, pop, pop right there. That's going to prevent that from drying out down the top. Label, label, label is important if you're doing a bunch of varieties like I am uh, to get all these different varieties to the people that signed up for our class. So right there. I'm going to put this in, a, in some moist uh, peat moss, uh, let it sit here in the basement for maybe a week, two weeks, and then I'll plan it out. We, you know, we're already almost into April here in Georgia, so this is, you know, really we're past the point of looking like there's going to be a frost or freeze at this point in the year. So these can go out just good garden soil. Um, I like when I plant them to put them uh, to put a bamboo post, uh, thin piece of bamboo just planted next to it because as this top bud or this bud we only want to we only want one to start to grow. Uh, so you may start getting some buds off the rootstock first, rub those off, we don't want those, and really, we only want one of these buds to take off, and that's going to be the leader or the, you know, the whip-style tree um, that we may get at the end of the year. Um, so as that is young and growing, uh, it, it's fairly tender, and we don't want that to break off. So that, that piece of bamboo or that post next to it is going to distract, and hopefully if a bird wants to land, they're going to land on the post and not on this young bud as it's growing. So that's the whip and tongue. Uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, a cleft graft um, in case we have cyan wood that is considerably smaller than our uh, rootstock. Um, so here would be a situation where we could do a cleft graft. They are quite a bit smaller, or the, the cyan is quite a bit smaller, uh, and actually I'll use a, a little bit bigger piece here. So with this, I like this especially for the beginning uh, grafter in that a um, lot less likelihood to cut yourself with this graft. So again, I'm holding it where the first roots are and I'm going to cut just right above that. Just a straight line cut. I like to remember to put the blade side down because it's going to smash less cambium than if the anvil was here. Um, so just a, something to keep in mind. So with this, I'm just going to try to go down the center of the rootstock and just open this up right down the center. And again, letting the knife do the work. I'm just rocking it in. We just want to open this thing up and hopefully it stays in the middle. Sometimes with this graft, you can kind of shoot down the side and you know, it works, it's fine. Now I don't want to just splay this open and lose that kind of elastic tension that's going to exist if we keep it somewhat together. Um, okay, and so here's my smaller scion. So I'm going to make kind of a sharpened toothpick type of cuts on both sides, exposing cambium again on both sides. 
down to a somewhat sharper point, something about like this. Maybe a little bit more cambium. Because again, the more cambium we have, the more points of contact and uh, healing that's gonna happen. So I'm sliding this in very carefully, I'm trying to be careful. So here, we only have cambial contact on one side, but that's fine. That's going to be a good graph that, that does really well. We want it to be flush on that one side. So that's our cleft graft. After this, we're sealing it up just like we would. And we're starting down to where that opens up. That crack is a little bit below where the scion is, so I want to make sure I don't expose that to drying air. Again, just kind of rolling the root. Yep. Pretty good at that move there. Rolling it in our hands. And then here I want to make sure I get sealant on top of that cut end. So the nice thing about this is it's so stretchy. As I roll it, the elasticity of that parafilm allows it to go over the top of the rootstock and seal that cut portion of the scion that's above the rootstock. So there we go. That, in my experience, has been a lot easier graft for um, beginners uh, and novices. So one, two buds, we'll cut it right there, just a little bit above that second bud. We'll seal that. Bump. And slap a label on there. Um, you guys that are gonna get these trees, do get a nice permanent um, metal label because this Sharpie on plastic is going to fade in the sun pretty quickly. Um, these imprintable metal labels, um, I thought I had some laying around here. Let's see, I know I've got one over here. These imprintable metal labels like this, you just use a ballpoint pen. Uh, this is going to hold up in the sun and the weather a lot better um, than these plastic on Sharpie. So that's it. That's the basics of uh, the two um, easiest graphs that I use um, throughout. Now, of course, we can use a standard whip and tongue when uh, the scion and rootstock are a little undermatched. Um, and just make sure that we're, we're touching on one side. That's a perfectly fine graft too. I just wanted to show you the option of uh, that cleft graft, which is um, a little bit easier uh, for the unsure hands uh, of, a, of a beginner. So that's it.